be more in prayer on uh, this Wednesday because I have an early meeting, but the rest of the week is normal. A week from today, we'll resume our uh, Christian education offerings uh, after the 10 o'clock liturgy. So adults will meet at starting at 1130 in the parish hall uh, and children upstairs in their Sunday school room. We got some of our uh, volunteers yesterday really got cleaned up. So again, we're very grateful for that. Uh, there is going to be a regional confirmation service um, on November 23rd, that's the Saturday before uh, Thanksgiving, uh, up in uh, the Toledo area. So if you or someone you know needs to be confirmed or received, uh, please let me know as soon as possible and that way we can get a, a class together uh, for everyone for whom that applies. Anything else? Yes? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Annie is really on about this. We will have a St. Francis Day pet blessing this year. You can see why she here. really wants this to happen. That will be, uh, it'll be the first Sunday of October, uh, which is two days after uh, St. Francis Day, but within the octave. Uh, so uh, that Sunday afternoon. So stay tuned for, uh, for more uh, information about that. Anything other than that? Once again, well.
Christ our Lord. Amen.
anti-intellectualism in American life. No doubt things have grown worse recently with social media propagating all sorts of bad faith claims. Hofstadter was not without his faults, uh, indeed those of political persuasions not his own could be forgiven for considering him a pompous jerk. Uh, but I think he highlighted a reality about how our distrust of expertise and academic consensus has often led us astray, and that for a long time. Well, as much as virologists and climatologists uh, and the rest they have come in for a special scrutiny in recent years, I think those in my own line of work have experienced this reality for even longer. Whether it was the Radical Reformation, which gave us uh, the Anabaptist and various pietist movements within Protestantism, the 19th century Great Awakenings, which brought modern evangelicalism along with a host of new, peculiarly American religions, or just our own seemingly primordial national inheritance of reliance on self, Theological and biblical expertise have been sometimes suspect. We may lament this, and I certainly do, but even then, it's the reality in which we live and we have to deal with. It does, however, make more acute the dangers posed by uh, what James might have called the tongue unbridled. I think we can appreciate the many ways in which the tongue, our words, can, again to use uh, the words of St. James, set the world ablaze. Whether those words uh, are just harsh words, being mean, or gossip, or spreading falsehood more generally. But here the Apostle speaks in particular about those who would teach the faith. The tongue of a teacher, drawing on the image from today's Old Testament from Isaiah. While the prophet rightly celebrates the gift God has given him, the apostle provides the needed concomitant warning. Not many of us should be teachers, because getting it wrong can lead others astray. This is a responsibility I take seriously. I know most of my colleagues feel the same way, uh, but what I said about expertise at the beginning notwithstanding, just because someone is in the business, as it were, uh, or had the right kind of theological education or whatever, doesn't mean that he or she is always as attentive to this as is desirable, which is why you sometimes hear uh, what I called in last week's sermon, bad hot takes, uh, even from the pulpit. Uh, again, James reminds us that none of us is perfect. If you speak perfectly, you're perfect. And I think his implication is none of us is perfect. Um, so, so we hear bad takes from pulpits. Now, I hope this isn't the case, uh, but you may even hear them from time to time from this pulpit. Because even as hard as I try, I'm sure I get it wrong sometimes. I think, however, that one can't get it too wrong if she or he is led primarily by the gospel itself. As complicated as the finer points of theological reflection and biblical criticism can be, the central message that of God's grace is pretty simple. The bit which controls the horse and the rudder which controls the ship are simple devices which control something larger and more complicated and, yes, more dangerous if out of control. So, too, is the central message of the good news a simple message that should and can serve to keep the whole church moving in the right direction. I lost a friend this week, a priest named Everett, uh, who served in Oklahoma. He was only 48 years old. He leaves 
behind this wife of Christian, Kristen, I got that wrong, but earlier to his wife Kristen, and their three children, Maggie, Kate, and Conrad. Uh, so I asked Ruth and Jared to pray for all of them. It was quite a shock to all of us who knew Father Everett. Uh, he'd been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer uh, just 16 days before he died. Uh, and while he rejoices in the nearer presence of the Lord, for which uh, those of us who knew him are all thankful, his absence will certainly leave a void for men. Anyway, my friend Father Everett got a bit of attention in uh, both church and secular press over the last few years for being the vicar of the fastest growing church in the country, Christ Church Tulsa. Uh, which had actually grown from 40 people on an average Sunday to 400 during this time. So we got interviewed a lot by uh, outlets, like I said, both inside and outside the church. And it was always encouraging to hear or read those interviews um, because while he was, of course, working diligently and allowing all sorts of programs to pop up as the Holy Spirit led in that parish, uh, there wasn't anything gimmicky or particularly creative about what Everett was doing. He was just preaching and teaching the gospel of God's grace. And he would have told you, that's all I know. I'm giving you the message that whatever you've done, God loves you anyway. You have forgiveness and life in him. Full stop. That's it. So he's going to be an inspiration to me, as have been so many others, uh, who cut through all the extraneous stuff to get to the heart of the matter, knowing that operating under the direction of the Holy Spirit, being led by the heart of the gospel, instead of all the concerns we may array around it to complicate, cannot lead us astray. And what's more, as Isaiah tells us, this simple truth, when on the tongue of a teacher, can sustain the weary with just a word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. with the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son.
Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died and may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We look at their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion to us our sins, no end of them, things not allowed to come up, and so hold us by your spirit, that we may be able to serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice.
now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, be an everlasting word. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be an everlasting word. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be an everlasting word. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be an everlasting word. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be an everlasting word. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be an everlasting word. Thank you. 
Let us pray.